um, Mary, it's your turn. You have three minutes. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to uh, cut this down by half. So what I'll do is I'm just going to kind of go through most of the images without talking about them, and I'll just kind of talk over them. Um, yeah? And <coughs> why didn't that move? All right. Um, so jumping ahead a bit, I, most of my um, education, my schooling, pri primary and secondary education, and my art education was all in the in the UK until the early 90s when I went to Amsterdam and um, did a, a masters at the Rights Academy there. And Amsterdam was pivotal for me because two things happened in my first year in Amsterdam that changed the way I worked forever. Previously to, to these two events, I was a painter. I was making paintings using plastic and uh, masking off images. I was very much um, about using the very hard edge pictographic language, visual language, which I still use to an extent. Um, but the things that happened was, the first thing was that I had to go to the aliens police. So that tells you everything to begin with. And um, kind of sign in and show that I had proof of study and money and, and all that and uh, get my stamp, passport stamped. This is like 1991. And uh, there were, at the time, there were lots of other British students at the Rights Academy. I was the only black um, student in the Rights Academy in 1991. And uh, I bumped into, I went, uh, went along, they stamped my passport and they said, thank you very much, Miss Evans, see you in three months. I'd like you to come back every three months. And then um, a friend of mine, I bumped into at college the next day, Steph from London, have you been to the rights, um, the aliens police? Yes. Did you get your stamp? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, at least you don't have to do that for another year. Light bulb, never, I'd never experienced anything like that before. The second thing that happened to me was, a few months after that, I lost my passport. I was in Amsterdam, my bag was stolen, my passport was in it. I reported it to the police. I went to the British consulate in the Vondel Park in Amsterdam to um, apply for a new passport. And I was told that not any old Tom, Dick and Harry can walk in here demanding a British passport. And I said, well, just, I'm British, you know, listen to the way I speak. Where the hell do you think I come from? It took me three weeks to get in touch with my, my parents, had to fax, this is all before, you know, this is in the dark ages, fax over the home office papers from the late 60s to prove that I was British. So I spent this time wandering around, stateless, wondering who I was, where I fitted in. I'm just gonna go through my slides as I talk. And uh, it was a really strange feeling. So for the Dutch aliens police, I was too African, even though I had a British passport for the British also the same, I had to prove who I was in order to 
kind of exist and be there. And, and it took, it's interesting that it took me being in another European country for, for, these, for this to happen to me. It had not happened to me before. Um, I'd grown up in Northwest London all this time, gone to college in England, and I'd never in, uh, experienced institutional racism in that way. So I've just shown you a few images then. My practice is very much based on a craft aesthetic, um, often decorative, not always. I use kind of decoration and ornament as a foil, in a way, for the kind of content of the work that I want to talk about. I'm interested in the psychogeography of um, trauma of the Atlantic, of um, British imperial history, the transatlantic slave trade, all those kind of uh, uh, things come into it. And also how culture moves around the world with people. Um, for instance, in this work that I did in China a few years ago, I grew up uh, on a street full of immigrants and all our mums had the willow pattern dinner set. Um, my friends were Irish, Jamaican, um, Indian, and they all had these set because they thought, oh, we're, we're English now, we've got to have this, this English dinner service. And, and it wasn't, you know, it was kind of appropriated from Chinese blue and white porcelain, again, because of Britain's imperial relationship with China. I suppose my signature material is this cheapo brown paper um, that we all know, that we all use to wrap up parcels. For me, it symbolizes, it's disposable, and it kind of symbolizes the, the disposability or disposable lives of the people that I'm, I depict in my work as silhouettes and cutouts. They're kind of glyphs, they're kind of ciphers, they're empty. I will make the same piece of work more than once in a different space. The architecture of the space very much kind of curates how I make the work and, and how the, the viewer experiences the work and becomes part of, especially when they're very, very large scale like this, becomes part of and drawn into the work. This work, this work is called Held, and it's very much about figures, people being held in limbo, in some kind of liminal space, um, very much based on the, my experiences in um, Ghana of traveling around the coast and visiting the forts there that were used during the slave trade. And, and I want my viewer to be held in relation to the work as they stand in front of it. Gingerbread. A lot of the things that I, a lot of the kind of media, I suppose, that I use in my practice are, are the <coughs> activities, hobbies I first had as a six-year-old when I arrived in England. It was very much about being a proper little English girl and making gingerbread and making silhouettes and doing English crafts. And a lot of that just really seeps in, it's just kind of become part of me and seeps into my practice. I first saw the image of the slave ship um, in a book, in a history book in Nigeria. I went back for two years when I was 14. And I'd never seen it in a history book in England, but I saw this image of the slave ship kind of diagram of how um, people were packed in a history book in Nigeria. And I decided I wanted to, to make this piece which is a two meter drawing um, in pencil of the diagram of the spaceship. And then I baked 400 little gingerbread men and placed them in the configuration. Again, a pattern, a diagrammatic glyph, kind of pictographic interpretation of the spaceship image. And for me, this, this is one of my most successful and favorite pieces of work because for me, the ingredients in the gingerbread, sugar, molasses, spices, were the kind of cash crops that um, African bodies were literally disposed of in order to produce. I'm not going to show that little video. Um, in the last couple of years, I did a residency at the Royal Botanical Gardens in, uh, in Edinburgh, in which I looked at tropical plants that had been transplanted. Um, one thing I haven't said yet is that a lot of my work tends to be in relation to some external stimulus, whether it's in the form of a residency or a piece of uh, a decorative, uh, like we saw before, the plates, historical episode, um, you know, some kind of document, that, something that has happened somewhere that I, I use in order to kind of propel myself in a way to try and um, answer these questions for myself. 
So I was interested in this transplantation of these beautiful plants in the Royal Botanical Gardens in Edinburgh um, from Africa and how they end up in Europe. And, you know, how did I end up in Europe? So it's always coming back to that same question. Um, and the top right, there's a, the, one of the archivists at the Botanical Gardens, I, he, he asked me to set him a challenge. Um, they have, they've got something like three million seedlings and, and um, seeds in the, in the archive there. And I said, I want to find the hibiscus that I had in my garden in 1980. And he found it, top right there. And I couldn't believe it. So it kind of um, propelled me to make this piece of work called Transplanted, in which um, I make uh, images of real life Africans, such as Equiano, um, Sarah Bartman, who had been born on the continent and had ended up in Europe. And I make these, um, kind of memorialize them on these paper plates. Again, they're disposable, they're paper plates. I was thinking about, in Britain, anytime anyone in the royal family sneezes, we get a, a memorial, a decorative plate, kind of um, on sale, or a tea towel or something, and I wanted to kind of claim, um, and I do quite often in my work, claim these kind of European crafts, and fine arts traditions, and to, just to tell a different story. So just coming up to, to date, um, thinking about <coughs> the, um, the show here in Eva and the work that I made here, um, I, I played a little snippet of the Pogues at the beginning and um, I started to look at some research to make this work. What, what I try to do when I, when I make work is to connect with the, either the history or something of the, the place that I'm showing in the, the local community, which wasn't difficult for this, for this show. I grew up in what is affectionately known as County Kilburn in northwest London, which is uh, so-called because of its very um, deeply pop uh, you know, strong Irish community. My uh, school friends were Irish. And um, so I think maybe because of that, we were kind of united in our immigrant um, kind of status in a way. Um, the Hackett's down, down the road, Monica Hackett was one of my best friends. And so I was looking at my general interest in African migration, but also started to look at, um, you know, the um, Irish migration as, as well, and engravings and photographs from, from the, that history to, to, to help me with this project. Images like this, you know, people kind of waiting in line, queuing up to, to get on boats to sail to the United States. Images like this, which were only five or so years before I arrived in, in um, London were apparently very prevalent in, um, you know, kind of boarding house windows and, you know, no Irish, no blacks, no dogs, people wanting to settle, emigrate, you know, live lives, raise families, and this were kind of faced with signs like this. And then right back up to, um, up to date, looking at images like this that have just been in the news in the last couple of years of, um, of our current kind of contemporary um, migrant crisis, apparently it's a crisis. And um, so I use these images and boat people as well, people crossing the Med to get into Fortress Europe to make this work in the um, Limerick City Art Gallery, which I hope um, you've seen. And um, I, I was kind of sent the dimensions by Noel for the, of the room and and I, I don't know what I did, but I forgot that there was this gap in, the, in, the, in this nice great big long wall. So I thought, oh, nice long wall, I'll do that queue of people. And then I thought, oh, forgot the gap. But I quite like the gap. I like it that people have to walk through the work and then they're part of the work and they become, maybe just for a fleeting moment, they, they become part of that line and part of that story and part of that history. And I was really um, intrigued that um, the other artists work here are, were you Tassian? I hope I pronounced that right. Um, her work has a really good kind of uh, conversation, a in, really interesting conversation with, with my work in the same space. They really kind of feed off each other. The, the, the stories that they're, they're telling about itinerancy and migrancy and kind of just literally picking up and taking off, upping sticks, taking your bed with you, taking your home with you. 
this is the last, uh, I think this is one of the last pieces I made in that whole space. And um, uh, I, I, I knew that I wanted to do a boat for the people. That was, that, that was as far as I knew that I wanted to do it to go. And then uh, as I finished, I thought, oh, I need a flag. And, uh, and, and then I just sort of stuck, literally that flag was two pieces of paper, two brown pieces of paper either side of a white space. So I thought, okay, it could be an Irish flag, it could be a French flag, it could be a Brazilian, an Italian flag, whatever flag, you know, that you can think of. And in a way, it kind of really doesn't matter which. Sorry, I've really rushed that, but thank you very much. Thank you.